Perhaps you've noticed when you walk in or if you look around, the predominant color of the evening is navy blue. There's a reason for that. Earlier in this month, about 42 of us had the privilege of participating in the annual Lads to Leaders uh, convention in Grapevine, Texas. Tonight, what I would like to do for the next few minutes is I would like to uh, share some things with you about what we were involved in as a congregation. And I did say what we as a congregation were involved in intentionally. You might not have been one of the 42 that actually got to physically go to the convention, but I am totally convinced that many, many more than 42 participated in this convention. I know because many of you told me that you were praying for the group while we were away. And I want you to know that means a tremendous amount to those of us that um, were there at the convention. You probably noticed that Sunday morning that there was a tremendous void in in the audience. Well, that's because the biggest majority of us were still at convention that Sunday morning. Others of you made cookies and made snacks and sent those along with us to the convention, and we appreciate you for that. I hope that you'll see over the next few minutes that the Lads to Leaders convention is not just about the young people that you see scattered throughout the auditorium, but the Lads to Leaders convention is about us as a congregation. And you're going to see that theme come through time and time again, I hope, if I present my thoughts clearly. I think you'll see that. But tonight I've been asked by the elders to to give the congregation a little uh, little report on the recent convention that we attended, April 3rd, 4th, and 5th in Grapevine. Uh, Most of you know this was held at the Gaylord Texan um, Hotel. Why I mentioned White House had about 42 people, that's adults and young people, um, that had the privilege of spending the weekend together. If you do the math real quick, if we had 42 folks there at the convention, our Sunday morning attendance is somewhere in the 220, 230 range. We had just shy of 20% of our congregation involved in Lads to Leaders for the very first year we ever participated. Um, I think that is a tremendous response for our first year. Um, We kind of got a late start this year in the program. I fully anticipate, and it is my goal, that I would love to see this coming year 75 folks from this congregation go to Lads to Leaders. I don't think that's an unrealistic goal. We have that many young people and that many parents um, that could participate, that have the opportunity to participate. So I want to encourage you, and my whole purpose of being here tonight is for those of you that went, maybe we can rekindle a few memories of the convention. Maybe it can give you something to look forward to. For those of you who weren't able to go, for whatever reason, I selfishly hope that you see something beneficial and that you will determine even tonight that you know what? I want to be a part of that for next year. I also want you to to know that I appreciate our elders and the support that they've given to this program. We began discussing the Lads to Leaders program well before anything was presented to the congregation. And I want you to know that the elders are solidly behind this program. They believe in this program. They see the benefits and the value that our young people and our families uh, receive from this. Two of our elders and their wives went with us this year. And I can't tell you enough how much that means to me and to our young people and to our families that went. Jerry and Pat Mitchell were able to go. Um, and participate with us, and also Jay and Arlene were able to go and participate. And um, I know that 
that Ernest and Gail and Aaron and Jean, I know they were with us in spirit, um, and they are solidly behind the program as well. They got to see firsthand what our youth and our families were involved in. But before I talk any more about what we were involved in specifically at the convention, I want to open up with some introductory introductory comments. If you have your Bibles, I want you to open them to the book of to the Gospel of Matthew, the 18th chapter. Not only is this going to be a presentation about what we were involved in uh, with lads to leaders at the convention. I want us to look at a few passages of of Scripture that in my mind at least are going to drive home the value and the benefit of us participating as a congregation in programs such as the Lads to Leaders. I want us to look at Matthew chapter 18 and I want us to read the first six verses together. Matthew 18 verses 1 through 6. The Bible says, At the same time, came the disciples unto Jesus, saying, Who is greatest in the kingdom of heaven? And Jesus called a little child unto him, and set him in the midst of them. And Jesus said, Verily I say unto you, Except you be converted and become as little children, you shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. Whosoever therefore shall humble himself as this little child, the same is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And whoso shall receive one such little child in my name, receives me. But whoso shall offend one of these little ones which believe in me, it would be, it would be better for him that a millstone were hung around his neck, and that he were drowned in the depths of the sea. If I were to ask you the following question, how would you respond? What is, in your estimation, one of the church's greatest natural resources that in many places is not being used to its full potential? How would you respond to that question? If I asked you, what is one of the church's greatest natural uh, resources, and I'm not talking about in White House, but in a lot of places, is not being used to its full potential, how would you respond? I would probably get a lot of different answers to that question, depending on your background, depending on where we've had um, where we've had the opportunity to visit and worship in times past. I want to share with you my my answer to that question. I want to submit to you that tapping in to the vast amount of talent that our young people have just might be the answer to that question. These young people that are sitting over here and scattered throughout the auditorium have a tremendous amount of talent that if we as the church do not tap into, I don't think we're doing them right. And what I want to do and what I know or I'm convinced our elders want to do is we want to do everything in our power to train our young people and to teach them God's Word and to develop them to their fullest potential so that when they graduate and when they go out on their own, they are faithful, productive servants in the Lord's church. That's what this is all about. Nothing else. It's not about awards. It's not about going and having a good time for the weekend, although we do both of those. This program is designed to train young men and young women to be leaders in the church. That's it. Plain and simple. I have heard numerous times over my life that our youth are the church of tomorrow. Anybody ever heard that phrase before? Probably a lot of us have. That our young people or our youth are the church of tomorrow. Now, I want to be clear in saying when someone makes that statement, Our youth are the church of tomorrow. I understand where most of them are coming from. Okay, I understand that they're probably meaning that our young people are the future leaders. 
are the future preachers, are the future elders, are the future deacons, are the future uh, Bible school teachers if it's one of our young ladies. I understand more times than not what is meant by that. But I want to emphatically say right now from the get-go that when someone makes the statement that our youth are the church of tomorrow, I emphatically 100% disagree with that statement. Let me explain. Stick with me and see if you agree. Let's look at that statement that you see up on the screen right here. We're talking about our young people. Are our youth the church of today? Or are they the church of tomorrow? And how do you, how do you answer, how do you respond to that question? We're going to answer that. You know, the world and, and Satan has long said that youth is for pleasure, middle age is for business, and old age is for religion. When we're young, What's the motto a lot of times? We live for the moment. Whatever feels good, do it. We can't see past the immediate. When we're in our middle ages, we're caught up in our careers. We're caught up in our families. And then when we become more advanced in years, well, we might have a little more free time for God. We see that all around us. I want to say to you and suggest to you right now that the Bible says that youth, as well as those in the prime of life, in the middle ages, as well as those who are more mature in, your, in years, are all for religion. The youngest person in here today is just as important to God as the oldest person sitting in this room tonight. It is absolutely wrong and contrary to everything we read about in Scripture to make the statement that the youth are the church of tomorrow to the exclusion of being the church today. And I want to follow up on that idea. I hate that statement. wonder if the Bible has anything to say. Does the Bible have anything to say that would support this idea or this thought that I'm trying to share with you about youth being the church of today versus the church of tomorrow. I want to see what does the Bible say about this idea. Paul, when he's addressing the young man Timothy, in 1 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 12, as you see up on the screen, the Bible says, don't, look at, don't let anyone look down on you because you are young, but set an example for the believers in speech, in conduct, in love, in faith, and in purity. I've got one word up there highlighted in red. You notice that? That one word I've got highlighted up there is young. Do not let anyone look down on you because you are young. What about this? The wise man Solomon. In the book of Ecclesiastes, the 12th chapter, verse number 1, says the following, Remember your Creator when in the days of your youth before the days of trouble come and the years approach when you will say, I find no pleasure in them. Again, there's a word that's highlighted up there in red. It's youth. Remember your Creator in the days of your youth. What about this one? Again, Paul's speaking about Timothy. In 2 Timothy chapter 3, in verse number 15, the Bible says this, And how from infancy you have known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Jesus Christ. Now, we know the story, right, about Timothy and how he came to a knowledge of the Scripture. He was taught the Scriptures from the time he was very, very young by his grandmother and his mother, right? Lois and Eunice. Again, there's a word highlighted up there in red, and the word is uh, infancy. Share another one. This is the psalmist. The psalmist in Psalms chapter 119, verse number 9 says, How can a young man keep his way pure? 
by living according to your word. That's Psalms chapter 119, verse 9. Again, do you see a word that's highlighted up there in red? The young man. A young man. What do you notice about these four or five passages that we've referred to over the last few minutes? They all have something in common. They all have or mention the idea of youth or uh, young person. Okay? That's why I highlighted all those words, all those words in red. I wonder, do you think God places any emphasis on young people? Are young people not important today and they're, they're just the church of tomorrow? I don't think, based on these passages we've looked at and other passages that we could cite as well, God places a tremendous amount of importance on our youth today as well as tomorrow. I want to look at some examples of that we can read about in God's Word. Biblical characters that are mentioned in the Bible, young people who did good things for God. This is not intended to be an all-inclusive list by any stretch of the imagination, but maybe you can think back to the story of Joseph. Maybe you can think about Jesus' cousin, John the Baptist. What about the young shepherd boy, David? What about Samuel? Remember how when Hannah gave birth to Samuel and she took him to the temple and promised God that if God would bless her with a son, she would dedicate him all of his life. What about the young man Timothy? We just cited two passages of Scripture just a moment ago talking about the young evangelist Timothy, Paul's son in the faith. And yes, even Jesus Himself. You say, Jesus' ministry was in His 30s. Well, when did, he, when did He start? Did Jesus ever do anything while He was young? I'm thinking specifically, long about age 12, was Jesus not in the temple uh, doing His Father's business, the text says? That's the same age as some of these young people that participated in this Lads to Leaders program that we were just involved in. My point is this. God has a tremendous importance placed on our young people, and we need to realize that, and we need to seize that opportunity. So, with the passages that we've read so far, with the examples that we've cited just a moment ago, and others that we could cite, no doubt. I want to ask you the same question that I asked you at the beginning of our lesson tonight. Are our youth the church of today or the church of tomorrow? Like you see up on the screen. I believe with all my heart and am 110% convinced that our youth are the church of today and the church of tomorrow. Our youth are as vital to the White House congregation right now as they will be when that some of them become elders and deacons and ministers and some of the girls become Bible class teachers in our Bible school program. Young people, you are important to this congregation and you are important to God. And I want you to know that. And this congregation places a great deal of emphasis and importance and is concerned about the spiritual training of our youth and of our, uh, of our young people. It seems to me to be the part of wisdom for the Lord's church everywhere, not just in White House, to recognize the fact that we have a limited time span to make a positive impact on all these young people who are sitting at our feet. And I also believe that God is going to hold us accountable should we not seize that opportunity and train our young people 
in the way that they ought to be trained. And that falls on us that are older, falls on us as parents, falls on the, on the, the leadership of this congregation, but I think God will hold us accountable for that. But I'm thankful that here at White House, our elders realize the value of our young people. They realize the importance of doing everything that we possibly can to see to it that they are taught the ways of God. And they are going to do everything they can to emphasize that and encourage the spiritual growth of our youth and families. Our young people at White House are tremendously important to the work of this congregation. And everybody needs to realize that. What have I done so far? I've tried to show you, and I wanted to emphasize the fact that our youth, our young people, and I don't just mean the teenagers, are not just the church of tomorrow. They're the church of today as well. And we need to realize that and we need to capitalize on that. Well, one of the programs um, or one of the tools that we plan to use as a congregation here at White House to accomplish this goal of um, aiding in the spiritual development of our teenagers and families is the Lads to Leaders program. The Lads to Leaders program, like I mentioned a moment ago, has as its sole purpose to train young men and young women to be future leaders in their local congregations both now and in the future. Now, I fully realize that our young men and our young women have different roles. I totally understand that and no one is confused about that idea or that concept. But there is work and there are things for all of our young people to do, male and female, young and old. And we want to train our young men as well as our young ladies um, to be future leaders in the church. Both are important to God. The Lads to Leaders program, I don't know how many of you are familiar with the program, has been around for approximately 45 years. Um, the first we, uh, Easter weekend, there are six conventions held at different uh, cities throughout the United States. There's one in Nashville, there's one in Orlando, there's one in Atlanta, there's one in Dallas, and I think there's one up in the northern part of the United States somewhere. I can't recall the sixth one. But thousands of young people and their families come together for the purpose of developing their spiritual talents. But I want to emphasize several things here talking about the program. Lads to Leaders is not solely a youth program. Lads to Leaders is not solely a youth program. You say, well, that's what it's called, Lads to Leaders. Yes, that's true. Lads to Leaders is a family program. It develops families, as well as specifically young people. It is a congregational program. It builds families and strong young people as it builds stronger congregations of the Lord's body. That's one of a number of reasons why the leadership of this congregation believes in this program so much. Most of you are aware of the fact that kind of our model of ministry for our young people specifically is kind of this, quote, family ministry concept. We don't have a youth minister. We don't have someone who's dedicated to work with just our teenagers. It's a family concept. After all, what does Scripture say or who does Scripture say the ultimate responsibility for training our children belongs to? Does it not lie with mom and dad? Um, the church's job is not to train our young people. The church's job is to reinforce the training that should be taking place with mom and dad. Okay, That fits our model of what we're doing here at this place. 
families work together, and you're going to see this in just a moment in some pictures, on various activities that engage discussion among family members, um, and we believe that that's a good thing. Look at the, I don't know if you can read this in the back or not, but this little graph says, our numbers do the talking, keeping the youth faithful to the church. After all, I mentioned a moment ago, that's what we want to do. We have as our goal for 100% of our young people to remain faithful when they walk out the back doors of this building uh, when they graduate. And it's no surprise here, if, if teenagers only attend worship services only, this survey says 38% of them remain faithful after graduation. If they participate in other programs, 54%. And not to toot L2L, Lads to Leaders Horn, but in this survey, um, they followed folks who had been involved with the Lads to Leaders program. 85% they found from this survey were still faithful to the Lord's Church a number of years after they graduated. This is just a tool. This is just one thing that we can do to help solidify the faith of our teenagers. Is lads to leaders some magic pill that's going to assure us that we have 100% um, retention, if you'll allow me to describe it that way, of our youth in the church? No, it's not. It's simply an organized tool to get our youth and our families into God's Word as well as developing their talents. This year, the convention focused on four of Paul's letters, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, and Colossians. And everything that we did dealt with one of those four books or had that as their theme or the background. The theme of the convention was the word one, O-N-E. You see it all over the building tonight on the back of the t-shirts. Taken from Ephesians, the fourth chapter, uh, in verse number four. This coming year, for next year's convention, the theme is going to come from the Gospel of Matthew, and we'll be doing an in-depth study of the Gospel of Matthew throughout the year. And the uh, theme is going to come from Matthew 6.21, For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. And everything that we do is going to be geared towards that, that thought process. I mentioned a moment ago, one thing we like about the Lads to Leaders program is that it is a year-long uh, program. We don't just prepare for a weekend, go and perform, and do what we're going to do, and then come back, and it's all done. Lads to Leaders is more concerned with developing folks year-round, and we like that. We like that. We don't just uh, prepare, go perform, and then it's over. And you're going to hear a lot of things uh, happening in the congregation pertaining to lads to leaders as we go throughout the year. Whether it be Good Samaritan activities, um, which deals with service projects, whether it be um, Bible study, whether it be leadership classes that we're going to be engaged in, you're going to hear and see a lot of things that our youth and their families are engaged in throughout the year. There's 37 different events, such as Bible Bowl, such as song leading, such as speech, such as debate, such as puppets. Um, and I could go on and on and list all 37. But we have lots of interest from our young people in all of these different areas. Um, and we're looking, we're looking forward to seeing the good things that, that come from that. I already have several adults tapped in to lead some of these different areas. I am looking for some more adults to help out with this next year's program. If you would like to help out with a certain area, I would love for you to talk to me about that. This program is so much bigger than any one person. It's humanly impossible for one person to do this. And this year, and I want to take this opportunity to thank a lot of people, a lot of adults, who I couldn't have pulled this off without their help. And I hesitate to start mentioning names because I'll probably leave someone out. 
but you know who you are. And if you were an adult that helped with Lads to Leaders this year, please know that we appreciate you and everything that you did um, for our kids. You know, it's long been said, what gets rewarded gets repeated. That's true on our jobs. That's true at school. That's true everywhere we go. On Friday evening as well as Saturday evening while we're up at the convention, an awards ceremony is held to recognize and encourage our young people for the hard work that they've done, for the things that they've participated in. I want to also mention to you right now that Lads to Leaders is a program that begins with children in kindergarten. It's from kindergarten through seniors in in high school, as well as some of the events include adults. We had some of our adults and some of our grandparents participating in Lads to Leaders this year. Um, And we want to encourage that as well. We want to really encourage some of you parents that have younger kids, we want to encourage you to seriously consider participating and going with us next year. Um, We think you'll be blessed because of it. Every young person that went and participated in some activity with Lads to Leaders was recognized and received some sort of of, of an award and was honored for their hard work. So the question is, is we're ready, are you? We are ready, are you? That's something that you're going to have to answer. That's something that each one of us is going to have to answer. We got one year under our belt. We got a lot to learn. But you know what? We're ready to go. And we're, re- we're excited. Um, and we want you to come along with us. Adults, can I count on you to help lead a group? To help work with one of our, uh, our groups that our teens are participating in. Young people, wouldn't you like to be around the rest of the young people in this congregation and get to know them a little bit better and spend time studying God's Word as well as developing your own talents? It's all about investing for the future. Now, I mentioned that our young people are the church of today as well as tomorrow. This this is a father and a son here at the convention. This son's about to, I don't know if he's fixing to do a Bible reading or lead a song, but this dad is trying to impress upon him the importance of presenting himself well um, in front of a group, of, in front of a group, in front of a congregation. And no doubt you recognize Braden here. Braden Lockhart um, did a tremendous job in opening up God's Word and reading Scripture um, there at the convention. And he was, he was recognized for that. Braden's in fourth grade. If we don't develop his talents, shame on us. I tried to tap in. I've got a video of Braden doing his, uh, doing his Bible reading at the convention. I tried to plug that in here so you could see the good job that Braden did, but I couldn't figure out how to get all the video clips in there. But just know and encourage Braden to keep on studying God's Word and every time when he has the opportunity to keep reading and not be afraid to get in front of a group of folks and to read God's Word to them. You know, one thing we emphasized over and over again, not only was it the theme of the convention, the idea of one, but we here at White House are one church family. We're not a... We're not a White House youth congregation and a White House middle-aged congregation and a White House oasis congregation. We are the White House Church of Christ. From the youngest to the oldest, we are one body. We are one family. Um, We sing that song sometimes. I don't know if it's in this book or not. God's Family. Sometimes we laugh together, sometimes we cry together. We're here for one another in this church family. That's one thing I like about this congregation. We are one church, we are one family, we help each other, we build one another up, and we encourage one another. On Friday evening, 
uh, before the awards ceremony. Every congregation that participates is recognized. Representatives from each congregation um, carry a banner and each congregation is announced. The White House, Congre- White House Church of Christ, White House, Texas, and everybody hollers and it's, it's, it's an exciting time. And you see a picture up in the, on the screen here. This year, um, this is our banner here and right here. It's got a picture of um, some of the group that, was going, that went with us. And this year, Megan Harris and Braden Kempton carried the, carried the banner representing White House. Next year will be two other, uh, two other young people. Um, but that's a, pretty, that's a pretty neat thing when they, they call all the groups and you see who all's represented from all over, uh, all over the so- southern United States. I mentioned most of us stayed over um, until Sunday morning. There is a worship service that's held there uh, at the Gaylord on Sunday morning. It is no different than any worship service than, than, than the one you had here that same Sunday morning. Um, there weren't skits in the worship assembly. There weren't choruses or choirs or anything like that singing at the, at the worship assembly. Um, any of you here would have been perfectly comfortable in that worship assembly. Some people... That's the first opportunity they had to worship with that many folks. Um, it, it's, it's a pretty neat thing. I could talk, and several of you could for hours, about Lads to Leaders and about the experiences that we had uh, a few weeks ago. But I, again, I want to thank everyone for your support, for everything that you did in helping our young people and our families and make this year's program a success. And I want to say one other thing before we go any further. For Megan Harris, for Molly Harris, for Emily Dupree, for Caleb Dupree, for Kelsey Kilgore, for Elena Kilgore, for Courtney Lockhart, for Braden Lockhart, for Savannah Shaw, for Sydney Parrish, for Tori Frick, and for Braden Kempton, those are the one, the young people that participated. Know that your church family is proud of what you've done. And we're praying for you, and we want to continue to see you guys grow in your faith and mature as, as Christians. Um, we're excited to see what the Lord has in store for you over the months and the years ahead. At this point, what I want to do is I want to show a short picture montage and then I'm going to come back up and have a couple of closing comments. So at this point, we're going to go into a a slideshow and I invite your attention. These are just random pictures um, from the weekend. I hope you'll enjoy this.
There's a lot more pictures that could be shown. There's a lot more videos that could be shown, but I just wanted to give you a small glimpse of, of what we were involved in. We had a good group of folks go to Lads to Leaders. We've got a good group of young people here, and I know you're proud of them. I know I'm proud of them, and our best days are ahead of us. So I want to encourage you to, to take every advantage, whether it's Lads to Leaders or any other program, um, to help make sure that our young people are faithful when they leave after graduation. 